And still to date in the 21st century, the, most of the world of wine is using a 19th century vessel. That simply no longer works. It doesn't work from a carbon footprint perspective, but it also doesn't work from a financial perspective. Hey guys, it's Matt Haycox here, and we are here for another lockdown podcast recording on the 23rd of April. Uh, I'm here today with Santiago Navarro, who is the founder and CEO of the London-based startup called Garçon Wines. And very interestingly, he's reinvented the traditional 750 milliliter wine bottle by making flat wine bottles, uh, which are 100% recycled, and they can be posted through the letterbox. Uh, and uh, I mean, this isn't just this isn't just a fun thing to look at and, and I guess something quirky you know every business nowadays is is hit by uh, you know the, the impact of carbon footprint of, re, of you know recyclability etc uh, and the wine and sustainability and the wine industry is no different so it's uh, it's very interesting and, um, and fascinating really to see see this kind of product in a completely new slant on a you know on a, what I've just learned is a 200 year old invention uh, the, the existing circular wine bottle so Santiago thanks a lot for being here buddy and Matt, thank you for having me, and, and hi to all your, your viewers, your listeners. Uh, it's great to be with you. Uh, it's great to be with you a day after Earth Day, so happy Earth Day to you and to your listeners. It's actually interesting to see that if you look at um, data from socials, uh, I see that Earth Day 2020 has had um, nearly three times the popularity on hashtags on Instagram, showing the increase in interest in the health of our planet. And I guess it's it's the COVID world of lockdown. You said in your introduction that you're doing um, lockdown podcast recordings. It's great to be here. It's great to share a message of sustainability through wine. So as you correctly said, Garçon Wines is the inventors of a flat wine bottle, a flat wine bottle made entirely from recycled PET. So we flatten the wine bottle and flat means it's a cross section. So. Um, we flatten the wine bottle, obviously, to save space. When you have flat products, they pack like books. But when it's designed as a cross-section, it looks like the bottle you know and like. So saving space on top of using a lightweight, strong material, a recycled material, because we use entirely recycled content, not pre so pre-existing material, not single-use plastic, means we save energy and weight. So the saving in space, weight, and energy cuts your financial, but also your environmental cost. And that is fundamentally important to what we do. And, and just to contextualize this, what, 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 it, what is the difference in, in, in cubic, uh, not cubic capacity, obviously I know the bottle size, but, but, in, but in terms of, uh, if you were gonna pack this, what, what's, the, what's the cubic capacity saving in, in packaging? Yeah, so because of the flat surface area, so imagine that if you have two circles, they only touch at one point, you lose all the space around. By doing that in a case of six bottles, we'd save around 40% space. To oh, really? give you an indication, we have a 10 bottle case for e-commerce, which would otherwise carry just four round glass bottles of the same volume. Okay. And so we're making a significant difference when it comes to moving product. A product that actually moves at great distance. When we started this conversation before you pressed record, you were saying about your love of wines from California. Those wines are packed in California and most instances in round glass bottles, and they come to you in the UK in those bottles. A bottle that is correctly, as you pointed out, a 19th century advancement to a 17th century British invention. The glass wine bottle was invented in the UK by a gentleman called Sir Ken M. Digby, an inventor, and pre that wine was moved in barrels or casks. But Digby's invention was to create a vessel that was a bottle that was easier to move wine from the place where it was being sold to the home or other location where it was consumed away from a public house or what became a pub. So it was, it was two centuries later in the 19th century that the French realized that Digby's onion bottle, so a bottle really like an onion, was very inefficient for storage and transportation. So they improved it and they created the two bottle shapes you know, and most other listeners will know, the Bordeaux and Burgundy bottles, those traveled across the world of wine with the grape varieties from those two key appellations. And still to date in the 21st century, the, most of the world of wine is using a 19th century vessel. 
that simply no longer works. It doesn't work from a carbon footprint perspective, but it also doesn't work from a financial perspective. Wine is a tough margin business. When we can pack more than two, two, amounts, uh, two times the amount of product on a pallet, you're suddenly slashing logistics costs, putting more money into where it needs to be in the pocket of winemakers. And just to be clear for our audience here, who, who is your customer? Is, you, is your customer the wineries who are producing the wine so they, so they would buy your product in bulk and, um, and, and that's how it would then end up, end up with the end user? Or, or do you get involved? Yeah, correct. So, so we're a B2B business, a business-to-business -business company. So we sell products into other businesses. We sell two things. We sell finished products. So we're a wholesaler of wine in our packaging. We sell that to companies who don't normally deal with wine. But the big area is actually, as you correctly pointed out, is acting as a packaging and processing company for wineries who want to take their products into the 21st century. Wineries are great at viticulture and at winemaking, so great growing and winemaking. When it comes to the packaging, what we want to do is do to the wine industry what Tetra Pak did to the dairy industry. So that's help those who are really good at producing wine or growing grapes, et cetera, to, to use our packaging solutions, our sustainable packaging solutions, to bring their businesses quickly, easily into the 21st century. And tell and, and how, how has the uptake been? I mean, I've got obviously I've got no 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 uh, right to say this other other than let's say my, my layman's perception. But I, I would imagine that whilst all the benefits are abundantly clear, that, that I'm sure many of the of the big wineries are also steeped in histrionics and politics and and and, 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 and being set in their ways. I mean, is, is it been is it been hard hard to get to, you know many people to to adapt to this? Yeah, so, um, uh, yes and no. Uh, we've benefited from a significant amount of reputational traction, and that's press coverage, awards, uh, significant influencers saying great things about us. Take someone like Jancis Robinson, who you will know being a, a wine lover, so the world, arguably the world's leading wine critic. She calls what we do a groundbreaking bottle. Uh, others like Decanter, Andrew Jefford, writing it and saying that he likes the bottle and it gives him hope. It looks great, he says, and gives him hope. And um, importantly for us, it was onboarding one of the top five or ten by volume in the world. And we recently, during lockdown, quietly announced our collaboration with Accolade Wines, the UK's number one wine company, the brand owner behind well-respected brands like Hardy's, Banrock Station, Echo Falls. And so you will shortly start to see their brands in flat. That will make others want to join. But I should also say that we have been fortunate enough that through that reputational traction, my team have managed to start conversations with many of the well-respected wineries from Australia to California and, and, and retailers, for example, the Nordic alcohol monopolies, um, who are looking always to cut their carbon footprint and to do more sustainable things. So I think the response has been phenomenally good, much greater than I ever expected. If you think that in the last 200 years, the only significant packaging innovation in wine comes both one year apart in Australia. So 1964 screw cap, Aussie invention taken to the French, and a year later, Thomas Angove registered the patent for bag in box. And those have remained to be the only true wine related innovations, can and other things come from other industries and were brought into wine. But once again, so we introduced the first innovation to wine bottles in two centuries. So I didn't expect it to happen overnight, but it's happening a lot quicker than we can actually keep up with, which is extremely positive. And, and how, how's the um, how's the reaction been from the actual from the actual consumer? Uh, because I mean, I, I guess whilst whilst it's a B two B product, you know, your your customers still still need the buy in of their customers customers to a degree. You know, in term in terms of accepting that you know that, that end product product is changing. You know, obviously, you, you talk about the inventions of let's say you know the, the Australian screw top and the and the um, and the bag in the bottle. Uh, and I guess you know whilst a, a, any anyone who knows wine you know will know that new world wine you know well, Australian wines, New World wines, with with screw tops, you know, are, is is the de rigueur now effectively? But you know, to, to, to the layman, they go screw top. That's shite. You know, as 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 there issues, you know, get, get, getting uh, getting the public traction on this. 
Not actually. I think we dedicate a large amount of back label space to give uh, communication on the bottle being an eco flat wine bottle to, to, to forward the message of doing the right thing for the health of our planet, for the wine industry, etc. And now more and more as a result of COVID-19, the unfortunate scenario we find ourselves in will only accelerate. But even pre COVID-19, and we can only truly use, I think, anecdotal evidence at the moment, which is the imme immense amount of love we get on social media. It's very, very heartwarming. It's very motivational for myself and my team. It is truly great to see how positively people have responded. It's also very playful because people suddenly think, oh, wow, flat. I'm, I'm, I wonder what else could be flat and why, why do we assume that round is the norm? Why are we not trying to save space? space in our fridge, space in our bags, space in so many areas, not just on pallets in a B2B environment. People get excited when they put this in the shelf door of their fridge and suddenly realize you can pack so many more bottles in a fridge door, which is normally competing for so much other products. So I think we have had a really positive response. I only see it accelerating very positively. I see the RSA commissioned a poll just recently, I think a few days ago, which shows that only 9% of Brits want to go back to the pre-COVID normal, post-COVID. People have realized the air is cleaner, the planet is healthier, there are deer coming into town, you know, communities have come together. Yes, it's a struggle to be in lockdown and it's a curb on one's freedoms, but I think the upside is we're going to see suddenly people accelerating to probably positions where, for example, a country like Sweden is, where if we really want to mitigate against our biggest problem, and that's that our planet is on fire, we all need to be living like the Swedes tomorrow. We have a good chance of doing that post-COVID and the rest of the world, truly caring about the health of our planet, respecting Mother Nature, because as many experts have now said, what COVID shows us is don't mess with Mother Nature. And, and we've come to see how that can impact. So our planet is on fire. The data is scary when you look at the parts per million in our atmosphere. And I can come back to that later if it's interesting or relevant. But we are living in a very unhealthy world and unhealthy planet. And that's not just human health. It's also planetary health. And so we need to make a step change. So I'm confident. And so far, the market and consumers and corporates and wineries have been immensely positive to what we're doing. Oh, we're extremely lucky. Timing is really, really good for us. Um, and that's sometimes something you can't create perfect timing. But I'd argue that we're as good as this timing could get. And do you, do you have just the one problem, just the one skew? Is it just one, one identical bottle that every that all your customers buy? Or do you, do you have single bottles, magnums, you know, uh, you know different packaging? Yeah, so the world of wine principally has two bottle shapes, Bordeaux and Burgundy. The Bordeaux bottle being the higher shoulders and the Burgundy being the one with the slopey shoulders, more accustomed to great varieties like Chardonnay or Pinot Noir. Those are, are covered across the world. So we have released a flat Bordeaux bottle in 750 ml or 75 clears. We'll shortly do the same with Burgundy. We will then release bottles of different sizes to account for different drinking occasions like festivals or other things where people maybe want single serve. But aside from the, the bottle or what we would call in a packaging industry, the primary packaging, we offer a whole range of secondary packaging. That's different cases for different applications. We offer a single um, bottle case that fits through an average UK letterbox. That's an immensely popular product at the moment. We've seen some of our stockists, so business customers, increase more than 40-fold on sales month on month. It's phenomenal. Uh, we can't get enough of that product, actually, to cope with demand. We're doing our best to keep up. But then we offer cases. I explained the 10-bottle case we offer for e-com, where we pack eight light books and two bottles in the airspace around the neck, which, once again, we cut nearly all airspace. We have three bottle cases and six bottle cases, which will be used for Amazon. We have a case where you have a, a box which takes a pizza and, and, a, and a bottle of wine. So it's to deliver a complete meal in a delivery scenario. So you, you actually supply the packaging as well as the bottles, do you? Correct, yes. It's a whole solution. And in instances, we'll also bottle the wine. 
So uh, an example is we're putting in place a dedicated bespoke bottling line together with our collaboration with Accolade Wines, and we're doing that at the world-class facility in Bristol called Accolade Park, Europe's largest wine warehouse and distribution facility. And there we will be able to receive um, tankers of wine from our winery customers and we'll be able to pack it. So then we'll be able to deliver back to their winery or their warehouse, or they can come and collect it from Bristol if they have the uh, network or the infrastructure. So yes, for us, it's about offering a true turnkey solution because wineries are really good at what they know how to do, viticulture and winemaking. They can leave the packaging to us. And so what, what about wine collectors? I mean, you know, do, does, does the wine um, you know, does the wine still age as well uh, or, or the same in, in, in one of the flat bottles? You know, or is it, I mean, is this more at the moment for, you know, more immediately drinkable wine? How is it featured into the, into the, you know, the, the, the big classic names and the, and, and the investment side of the market? Yeah, that were not for that space. That space can remain in glass and it will have very little impact. And the money is also there on the, in those wines that sell at a premium in order to afford expensive logistics. And the volume is not so big that the carbon footprint. The world of wine consumes, produces around 33 to 35 billion wine bottles a year. In the UK, we consume around 1.8 billion of those. The majority of those wines will be produced and consumed within the same vintage, or they will be aged in barrel, barrique, tank, they were bottled and sold so that's so that people are not holding stock also bear in mind that most wineries don't have the space so when they're producing a new vintage they need to clear out the tanks for the new vintage and that's why bin ends get sold uh, more cheaper so that people can clear out warehouses and other things so the infrastructure is not always there collector space is very small i believe that should remain in glass it will add to the ceremony of a birthday and an anniversary New Year's Eve opening a glass bottle with a cork closure, but it's for the mass market wines, the wines that will be drunk young, will be drunk in some instances just a few hours after purchase or after delivery if it's e-com. Uh, it's for those where we can make the biggest impact. That will be the vast majority. We're talking in some markets north of 75, 85% of wine by volume. I, I was hoping to get one of your flat packs with a bottle with a bottle of Opus One and a Domino's pizza you know, com, coming together. Uh, not everyone's uh, affording Opus One, <laughs> but um, I, I think that's that's for people like yourself who've um, obviously uh, worked hard and been very successful. Uh, and it is great. Um, you know, there's there's many great wines from California, Screaming Eagle, and others. I guess ones that come to mind as as great names: Stags Leap. And uh, those should remain in glass. They need to age in bottle. They benefit from bottle aging, but will make very little difference in terms of the impact we can we can have both financial on the industry, but most importantly now environmental. Because when we talk about sustainability, and it's really an important message, I think, for people who use the term sustainability, it shouldn't be confused with eco-friendliness. So sustainability is planet, people, and profit. And all three need to be taken into account. If we don't, we will end up with diverse problems that verge away from just being eco-friendly. And a great example is Chile last year, you know, in the run up to hosting the most important climate discussions gathering in the world, COP25, Chile went into meltdown. So the society was deeply unhappy. And so the people element of planet, people and profit was, um, you know, out of sync. And so we need to ensure that we are giving preference to planet because our planet is so deeply unhealthy and without it as we experience now we enter into massive problems but we must not forget people and profit because otherwise we'll come out on the other end having rescued our planet and then having um, societal meltdown or economic depressions well, so uh, it's it's that balance between all three that we are as a company very focused on and 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 sp speaking of speaking about profit, I mean, where 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 do you um where where do you sit with competitors on this? I mean, is is this a patented product? You know, is is there something you know is there something unique to yourselves, or or or, or is this is this a market that you know there there is or will be competition on? Yeah, so we do own a very broad portfolio of design patents or registered designs across most of the world. So that's a portfolio that we own and we continue to grow and for us that gives us the possibility to invest today to grow in the future so the 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 security that gives you 
as the inventor, as the innovator, gives you that uh, first mover advantage. But one of the key reasons we moved in our early days from being a UK B2C company to be a global B2B company is we want to allow our packaging to be used by others and by giants. So we are very open to engagement to with others. We don't, we don't use our, our intellectual property portfolio in any way just to simply be lazy and uh, enrich ourselves. That's not um, where we're at. We're, we truly recognize the need for the wine industry to benefit by being more sustainable. That's once again, planet, profit, and people. And so we actively engage with companies right across the value chain of wine, from retailers to wineries, from small to very big, uh, trying to help where possible everyone to benefit from our invention and our innovation. So we do though own an intellectual property portfolio, and that I think is important in giving us the security to make the early investments so that others can activate our innovation with very no fi with very nearly no fixed costs, just a variable cost. So once they use the packaging, they pay for the packaging they use, they pay for the processing they use, but otherwise it would cost wineries hundreds of thousands of pounds to be able to create an innovation that would allow them to benefit. And most wineries can't afford that. So with us, they just pay for what they use. It's a pay-as-you-go model, which is a lot easier than a, than a, a large, expensive innovation project. And obviously, we've spoken COVID you know, a couple of times in the conversation. But I mean, how how have you, as as a business, been specifically impacted? I mean, I mean, obviously, when we first started talking about this, you know, we we talked about the fact that you'd close your offices down, you know, pre, pre uh, um, well, pre shutdown actually happening. I mean, how 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 have you adapted as a business? How have you been affected as a business? Yeah, so we did. I, I gave the choice to my team in the early days when I saw the data from Europe looking bad and in advance of there being an official lockdown in the UK. We sat around the table as we make most decisions and I said, what do you want to do? Shall we be responsible and accountable and work from home now and do our part or shall we wait till we really are forced to? And everyone voted in favour of doing the right thing and locking down for the older or, or, or more vulnerable elements of our community. So I'm very proud of that. We, I have a great team. We're all very young, very responsible, very accountable, great fun. We miss mostly the social part of working together. We enjoy getting together and, and to you know uh, have fun whilst doing good. I think it's really important. And we're in a really um, great position. Not only do we work in one of the most amazing industries in the world, but we bring a lot of happiness to people. Our company name is even Delivering Happiness Limited, trading as gas on wines. For us, um, you know, doing things with a smile and having fun is really important. It's not all doom and gloom, actually. If you innovate, um, you don't need to um, account for that. What we have seen, though, is actually for us, the future looks even brighter than it did pre-COVID because what's happened is that people have been locked in at home. So what we'd call the off-trade sales of wine, so that's wine to be consumed away from premises, has boomed. The on-trade or wine to be consumed on-premise, the restaurant hotel, has fallen away. And suddenly, actually, many people have embraced the online channel simply because they want to have the convenience of staying in the safety of the home and taking delivery. What we've created is an ideal packaging format for making a success of e-commerce. That's once again, because of the space savings, the weight savings, the, the strength of the packaging, it will not break. It barely needs any uh, you know, protective packaging. You can, you, know, you can throw them on the floor, they don't break. And so it's really important for us that now we will, um, I guess, in a matter of weeks, not even months, we will see the growth in online wine where it's probably taken groceries in general 20 years to get there. It's taken like the UK around 20 years to get to 20% market share online. You'll see that in the UK now will go, the UK was around 10% of volume being done to the online channel. The data I've seen at the moment is from the US which is touching on nearly 30% market share of the off-trade basket being conducted online rather than in store. So it's an immense opportunity for us from both the sustainability perspective, but also from the e-com perspective. We have the perfect packaging for those two scenarios and COVID-19 has created this, uh, this affect this impact which makes our packaging and in fact we have had so many inquiries we've been absolutely mad mad busy i'm so grateful to all the team who've been working so hard 
um, to, to make it all work, including, you know, I mean, Amelia, I guess, who's, who's running our business development alongside Hamel, Ellie and Josephine, who do a phenomenal job in marketing, and most recently, Camilla, who unfortunately joined us just as we went into lockdown. So she's, she's experiencing the weird side of it because she doesn't really yet know us that well. She knows us like this through video calls. Um, but, uh, but hopefully we'll come out of this um, healthy, happy, and without too much of a, a damage to our economy. Let's, let's hope it's a recession rather than the depression. And um, we look forward to sharing glasses of wine together at the end of um, successful days and, and having, once again, a laugh, because for us it's important to be professional, but to have fun. No, fantastic, 100%. So uh, for, for the guys at home, how can they hear, how can they hear more about you? Where, where can they find you? you know, give yourself a little social plug, website plug. Where, where can they read more and where can they, where can they follow you? Yeah, so we have actually a very active website, which is kept well up to date once again, thanks to the great work of Ellie and Josephine. So garsonwines.com. I'd actually suggest rather than just going to our website, just Googling our name, because you will see some of the more than 500 articles written about us in the last couple of years, entirely positive, really interesting to see different people's perspective, anything from an article published yesterday in Design Week to you know multiple interviews in Forbes, um, you know, Financial Times and others. So yes, there's a lot online. Um, the social media handles are at Gas on Wines. Um, the letterbox wine element is quite interesting too, a product for which we also hold UK trademarks. So yeah, I think online is a great space to meet us, to find us, and we um, are engaging. So do reach out, we will chat. I will too, I will make sure after this, if anyone has anything, please, tweet me at Santiago Biz, B-I-Z, um, I will respond. Um, and, and yeah, so find us online. Um, it's, um, it's, a great, it's a great means. It's once again, it comes back to the point I made. Wine online is perfect. It's a complex product. So uh, we look forward to helping many of the one million wineries that are across the globe um, become more effective, efficient, sustainable. Uh, in a 21st century because they need 21st century packaging in a 21st century world not 19th century packaging or 20th century packaging for that matter fantastic well listen santiago i thank you very much for being here uh it's been it's been, been super super interesting to, to to hear about something completely unusual and un, un, unexpected you know even for, for me as a wine lover i'm sure sure the guys listening to this now and the people who are listening to it in the future are, are, are going to be equally as fascinated as, as i am and uh and we'll be and I'll, I'll be looking forward to receiving a bottle of wine at, at some point from someone in a, in, a, in a flat pack case Thanks, Matt. And just one final thing, because it is Thursday evening and we're uh, just a little bit about an hour away to clap uh, for our carers. Just want to shout out for people to take the moment tonight to salute to the great people who are taking care of the UK and many other communities across the world during this hard time. So people should keep positive, should keep smiling. We will get out of it, but we need to be responsible and take care of those in our societies who need us to be responsible. So thank you, thank you, Matt. Thank you to um, any viewers and listeners. Um, cheers. Thank you, buddy. See you again soon. Bye-bye.